Hi again. Welcome to Chess Base Workshop. I'm Steve Lopez. Thanks for clicking the link, joining us for this presentation. Not sure how to begin the my yammering, my, my monologue today. Other than to say recently I've had the opportunity to talk to some chess base users via telephone. And it's really weird. I've been doing this for a long time. I wrote articles for you know like a decade before I started doing videos over a decade before I started doing videos and it's it's a lose-lose situation to some extent because if you do a very basic video or very basic article on basic features of a piece of software the advanced users feel ripped off whereas if you do an advanced feature thing the new users are saying you're not helping us so I've been doing a lot of basic stuff. What I want to do in this video is I want to combine a bunch of different features. I want to show you basically, in a way, a day in the life of a chess base user. This is going to be a typical task that you're going to do in chess base. And you're going to do it a bunch of times. What prompted this was a telephone conversation with a fellow who does a lot of the same searches over and over and over again. A guy named George. He's kind of a kindred spirit in a way because he plays a lot of unusual openings. He specializes in gambits and unorthodox openings. And those of you who know me remember my old web page, uh, my personal page from 10 years ago. I'm a gambit freak. I, I love this stuff. And he finds himself going in and researching gambits and unorthodox openings. But he finds himself doing the same searches over and over and over again. He'll go in there and look up a particular gambit and play through some games, and then he'll close chess base, and he'll come back later that day or come back the next day and find himself doing the same search. And he wants to know how do you save your search results in chess base so you don't have to keep setting up the search and doing the search over and over again. That's a good question. It's an, it's an excellent question. And there are several ways to do this in chess base. What I'm going to show you is probably the easiest way to do it. One way to do it is you can create a key for your search. But there's a bunch of steps to that, and it's a little bit intricate, and if you mess it up, you, you make a mess. The easiest way to do this, honestly, is if you're going to search for the same games over and over and over again, just make a new database and copy the games into that database. None of the databases that you see in my, in my database desktop here, none of this stuff is permanent. You can delete any of these at any time. You're not married to a database. You can get rid of it if you want to. It's not a big deal. For example, Adolf Anderson, PGN, I'm not using it. Haven't used it in quite a while. So I think it's time to get rid of it. So let's right click and go to delete all files. And then ask me, do you want to delete it physically or move it to the wastebasket? If you're not sure that you want to get rid of this, move it to the wastebasket. It'll be in your recycle bin, your Windows recycle bin, so you can restore it if you want to. However, your other option is delete physically, where it just deletes it. Boom, gone, no way to get it back. That's fine, goodbye. So Anderson is now gone. I clicked OK, pow, history. So you're not married to any of your data. I mean, you can, you know, you can create a database, and you're not stuck with it for life. You can delete it anytime you want to. So that's what we're going to do, is we're going we're to create a database. And then we're going to find, we're going to do a search, we're going to find the games, we're going to copy them into the database. And I'll show you something you can do with it once it's there. Okay, so here we go. First thing you want to do to create a database, you come up here, it says database, and there's a button that says new. And you see the little mouse over pops up, says create a new database. Another way to do it, by the way, there's always more than one way to skin a cat in chess base. You can go to the application menu, select new, and select database. This also, the mouse over gives you a keyboard command. If you want to do it with the keyboard, you can hit Control X and do the same thing. So that's three ways to do the same thing. But the easiest way, obviously, is if you've got a button right here, create a new database. What you have here is what I call the Windows File Select dialog. Now let me tell you, you need to know how to use this. You have to learn it if you're a computer user. No ifs, ands, or buts, because you've got a ton of programs that use this exact thing. This is not a chess based dialog, this is a Windows dialog. And there's a ton of programs out there that require you to know how to use this. And there's no excuse for not learning this anymore. It used to be you had to go buy a book, you had to go get a dummies book, or if you wanted to splurge, you could pay 50 bucks for a complete Windows how to book. Right now, when you're done watching this, if you don't know how to use this dialog, I want you to go to Google and do a search for Windows Tutorial. Actually, what you want to do is put in Windows and in whatever flavor Windows you're using, XP or Vista or 7, like if you're using Windows Vista, 
type in Windows Vista tutorial and you'll find a bunch of websites where you can learn how to use this for free online and even better some of the better sites do it with videos rather than with text so you can actually watch people doing it and learn how to do it they teach in America where I live in the US um, they teach children how to do this stuff when they're eight or nine years old now sometimes younger so there's no reason not to learn it it's not rocket science anybody can do it okay so please learn how to use this so this is not a chess based dialog it's a windows dialog but what we can do here is create a new database whether you see the title bar top says new database come down here the default file name is new database dot cbh now we're going to change this to something a little more relevant <coughs> excuse me what I'm going to search for is the Cochrane Gambit. So I'm going to make it Cochrane.cbh. Click Create New. Bing, here we are. We have a new icon that says Cochrane. Okay? Now, I want to make it look a little bit better. I want to make it look different. So I'm going to right click on it and select Properties. And we're going to jazz it up a little bit. First of all, we can choose an icon instead of this unspecific strange piece of paper looking thing we can come down here to openings and what we get is what I've come to find out is this is the new Microsoft symbol that they use in all their software for uh, data a bunch of data I think what it is is a, is a bunch of stacked drives apparently or stacked disks but there's a little pawn in front of it to show you that it's going to be opening data on a particular opening and down here we'll just make Cochrane say Cochrane Gambit and click OK and now we have a little better looking icon but notice when we double click on it of course there's nothing in it no games found so we'll close it now before we go on well let me let me do the search first that's what we'll do first thing you have to do if you're going to do a search I was going to talk a little bit about the Cochrane Gambit but we'll get there in a minute the first thing to do if you're going to search for an opening the best way to do it unless it isn't you're going to do this massive database on every variation of a particular opening system for example if you wanted to do all of the King's Indian defense you could very simply do a search for ECO codes E60 to E99 something like the Cochrane gamut which is actually a subset of an ECO code an ECO search doesn't quite get it because you're gonna get a bunch of information that you don't want it has nothing to do with the Cochrane so the best way to search for gambits and, and oddball openings is to do it by board position so that's what we're going to do. We're going to click on board up here at the top. There's a button for it. You see the mouse over says open a new board. Let's click on it. And we'll make the initial moves of the Cochrane Gambit. Now let me tell you about the Cochrane. There's a reason why I play this. Every time I do a Gambit in a video or in an article, I always get some master, international master, occasionally a grandmaster, who will write to me and say, I do not know why you play such trashy openings as the one you are recommending to people. No, I'm not recommending a thing. You know why I'm playing the Cochrane? I'll tell you why. I'm a part-time chess player. I'm full-time right now in the chess business as far as software and writing and editing and that type of thing. But I only get to play once in a blue moon anymore. And what I don't have time for between a full-time chess job, one part-time chess job, another part-time job as a game designer for games that have nothing to do with chess as well as family life and friends and all the other things that I do my other hobbies and whatnot I don't have endless hours to put in the openings so what I look to do is I look for, for odd openings and forcing openings that basically are going to cut down on, the, on the, the amount of theory that I need to to study so let me show you the Cochrane this is a perfectly adequate opening for a club level player that doesn't want to learn a ton of theory doesn't have time for it of course you play this your opponent plays the Petrov and normally you'll play this and typically not always you need you do need to learn a little bit of theory about what if your opponent plays something unusual here but most of the time if your opponent has picked the Petrov they're gonna play this at which point and this is great this is an old 1800s opening from the romantic era of chess and they call it the romantic era because of gambits and wild tactical play and swashbuckling and two guys going at it hammer and tong and at the end of the game you can almost be guaranteed there's going to be blood on the floor theoretically I mean I mean you know in a metaphorical sense not a literal sense what you do is this and then black does this because black's really got no choice that that knight has got to go 
Otherwise, you're going to either cop off the rook or cop off the queen. There's a fork there. So black's going to do this. And now the fun begins. White has a whole bunch of different options here. So this is the Cochrane Gambit from the Romantic era of chess back in the mid-1800s, you know, pre-Steinitz, where um, basically chess was a combination of uh, Raphael Sabatini book and an Errol Flynn movie. I mean, it was just wild stuff all the time. There's our board position. This is the, the position for the Cochrane Gambit. As I said, this is great because now I don't have to learn a ton of opening theory about the Petrov, and there is quite a bit. So now we're going to go back to the database desktop, which is here, the Chess Base 11 button down here at the bottom of the screen, down here on the Windows taskbar. And we're going to go to Mega Database 2011. You can use Big Database if you have it. You can use the Fritz 12 database, whatever it happens to be, whatever your large database is. Right click on it to get your pop up and select Search. And there's our old friend, the Search Mask. As I said, a lot of openings I could do an ECO code search, but I don't want to do that here because it's a Gambit opening. It's an oddball opening. So we're going to come over here to Position, and there's a shortcut. We don't need to set the whole board up. All we have to do is come here to Copy Board. And what that'll do is bring the position from the last board I was looking at. The last game window that I had open, click on that and it brings it over. Bing, and there is our Cochrane Gambit position. And you don't have to fool with this any any further. Once you click Copy Board, your first and last moves are filled in for you. You don't have to do anything else with it. Just click OK to start the search. So we'll click OK and we'll begin the search. It's going to take a minute or two. It's got to search nearly, what is it, about 4 million games now. So it takes a little time. But there we are. We hit 100% down here. You see it in the lower right-hand corner. And here's all of our games. To copy them into the new database, we have to tell Chessbase that we want to copy the games. So the first thing you do is single left click, really on any game in the list. I'll click on the first game because, you know, just to be orderly about it. But you can click on any game and do the same thing. Right click, select edit, and then go to select all. This keyboard shortcut, as you see, is Control A, which is normally how I do it, but you can do it here too. Right click, go to Edit, and Select All. And every game in that list, and by the way, I've done this search before, we can scroll down. There's about 600 some games, if I remember correctly. 639 games is what it looks like without my glasses on. All of them are highlighted, which means we've just told Chessbase that we would like to copy all of these games right click on any of them anywhere in this highlighted area go to edit and select copy click on it and it's going to look like nothing happened but what you, ju you just told Chessbase 11 here that you would like to copy all of these games now leave this window open don't close it go back down here to Chessbase 11 that's your database desktop There's our new database we just created, Cochrane Gambit, that has no games. So we're going to right click on it, go to Edit, and select Paste. And you get a confirmation dialog. Confir confirmation, you want to copy games 1 through 639. And there's other stuff down here you don't even have to fool with because there's nothing in that database. You don't have to worry about copying doubles and all this other stuff. Just go ahead and, and make sure it's the correct number of games. 639, as I said, that's fine. Click OK and it takes a moment or two and it will copy the games and there are our games Cochrane Gambit we can double click on it in fact and there's all of our games very simple now we can go back if we want to and we can close this window where we did the search we just get rid of that and we can close our board window as well we don't need that anymore either and we go back just to demonstrate, we'll just go back to the database desktop. And here we are. Here's our Cochrane Gambit database. Double click on it, and here you have your game list. Now I'm going to show you another trick. One last thing before we close this out for the week, and that is this. I get asked all the time about this particular column header, VCS. What does that mean? It means variations, commentary, or symbolic commentary. That's what VCS stands for. Variation, commentary, symbols. What that means is if you see something in the VCS column of a game list, it means that's an annotated game. 
If it's a capital V, it has a ton of variations. If it's a lowercase v, not quite so many. Same thing with S. A lot of symbols. If it's a capital S, a few if it's a lowercase s. That's an easy way to find games that have commentary. Let's say I'm just learning. I've been playing the Cochrane Gamut for a long time, personally. But let's, let's just say I'm just learning it. A good way to learn more about it is to look at commented games with variations in commentary. Okay? So, how do you find those games? You can click on the VCS column, and it sorts the games in the database so that all the games that have something in this column will appear first. And notice that we have a bunch of games here. Have a couple. We you can even see the annotator, uh, Pavel Blot, and he's uh, done a bunch of them. Victor Korchnoi annotated this one, and uh, we can always find games with variations, commentary, and symbols just by clicking on that column. Okay, very simple. However, we may decide that you know, wouldn't it be cool? Because notice that it doesn't actually change the order of the games in the database. It just changes the order in which they're displayed. Because if you come over here to the number column, you'll notice that the numbers are all out of order. They're not in numerical order. Notice also, by the way, if you want to go back to the regular order, which would be chronologically is the default order if you're using Mega Database, click text. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Click number. I'm sorry, and it'll go back to the original sort order. Notice also, by the way, if you're using Big Database or some other database that doesn't contain annotations, clicking VCS gets you nothing. There have to be annotations in the database for this to work. So I used Mega Database. There are annotated games. So I click VCS and there's, once again, the first games listed are games that have commentary. Now, let's say we want to make this permanent. How do we do it? There's a button for it. And here it is, under Games, up here at the, the menu tabs up here at the top, go to the Games menu, and you have a button here on the far right that says Fix Sort Order. What that means is whatever the current order of games in the database is, you're going to make that permanent. Once again, notice, you go over here to Number, and the games are not in numerical order. They're all mixed up because we resorted them according to variations and commentary. To make it permanent, click Fix Sort Order. Get a confirmation. Do you really want to do this? Yes, I do. This takes a moment. It's got to rebuild a whole bunch of files, but when it's done, there we are, kids. Uh, number game number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc., and games with variation and commentary are at the top. Very simple, and that's a way to uh, to not have to do the search for the Cochrane Gambit over and over and over again. I just close this database. And I have a database I've created of nothing but Cocker and Gamut games. So I can play through some games, come back tomorrow. I don't have to do the search all over again. I've got a database of games. And as we saw before, if I ever want to get rid of this database, if I'm done with it, as I said, I'm not married to it. This isn't a lifetime commitment. I can right click on it and select delete all files and then decide if I want to either send them to the recycle bin or just wipe it off the hard drive permanently. But I don't want to do that yet because I want to look at some games here. So I'm going to do that now and let you go, but next time around in Chessbase Workshop, we'll look at something else that we can do with this database, okay, to make it even easier to find games within this 600-plus games that are in the database. So until next time, I'm Steve Lopez for Chessbase Workshop, asking you to please have fun.